This week in Jamaica now, scandalous, the eight-month wait for police vehicles after the car dealer received $200 million. Moravian Pass the pleads guilty to sex crimes. He's to be sentenced on March 8 next year. The fuss over Lisa Hanna's cap sleeve dress in Parliament. Major fire at Getty's refrigeration. It's a billion dollar blow before Christmas. Jamaica's Davina Bennett returns home after her third place finish at the Miss Universe pageant. And modern day plantations. UNWTO boss seeks to clarify a statement about five star resorts in underdeveloped communities. I'm Damian Mitchell, and this is Jamaica Now. The Prime Minister Andrew Holness is under increasing pressure to take action against representatives of the National Security Ministry in the scandal over the procurement of vehicles for the police. After three deadlines and eight months waiting, O'Brien's International Car Sales and Rentals Limited has only delivered 30 of the 200 cars it was contracted to procure. In the meantime, O'Brien's is requesting waivers of GCT and special consumption tax, which were not part of the original agreement. The opposition has called it scandalous. If a contract has gone out and the terms of the contract are such and there's any form of waiver or anything that would allow or moratorium which would now allow them favorable treatment as re with regard to persons who previously had tendered, that could not be a correct action by government. And Clement Ibanks, the managing director of O'Brien's International Car Sales, is refusing to give a timeline for the delivery of the remaining vehicles. Mr. Ibanks also said he could not be sure when the 66 vehicles now on the wharf will be delivered. Until we get the green light from customs, we cannot clear. When we did the tender, it was a little bit too close. If it was 200 cars, you could move 200 cars in Jamaica real fast. But to source the pickups, we had to go between Thailand and Dubai. Former Moravian pastor Rupert Clark is now facing the possibility of life in prison after pleading guilty to two counts of having sex with a person under the age of 16 years. Clark, who was in charge of the Nazareth Moravian Church in Manchester, pleaded guilty this week when he appeared in the St. Elizabeth Circuit Court. He had gone there for the hearing of an application by the prosecution which wanted to transfer the matter to be heard at the Home Circuit Court in Kingston. After Justice Martin Gale ruled that the matter should be transferred to Kingston, Pastor Clark's attorney, Deborah Martin, asked for her client to re-enter his plea, and that's when the 64-year-old former clergyman admitted he was guilty. In December last year, Clark was caught by the police having sex with a girl under 16 years. The police say he had also taken grocery for the child. Investigations revealed that Clark had also had a sexual relationship with the girl's sister, while she too was below the age of 16. The St. Anne Southeast MP Lisa Hanna set off a series of comments and criticisms on Wednesday when she turned up in Parliament in what was perceived to be a sleeveless dress. The St. Andrew West Rural MP Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, in an off my comment, called it attention-seeking. Hanna was wearing a black cap sleeve dress. A cap sleeve extends only a short distance from the shoulder and tapers to nothing under the arm. Amid the Sotto Voce comments, at one point Hanna was overheard saying, raise it on a point of order. House Speaker Pernal Charles later said he has written to Hannah reminding her of the dress code as is set out in the standing orders or the rules of parliament which do not allow sleeveless attire. The operators of Geddes Refrigeration Limited say they are no likely job losses as a result of a major fire which destroyed its Spanish Town Road plant on Thursday. For more than three hours, firefighters from three parishes battled to contain the blaze. It is reported that the fire began in the roof and quickly spread, forcing the people to evacuate and rush to save their properties. Early estimates indicate that losses amount to $1 billion. Jamaica's Davina Bennett, the second runner-up to the Miss Universe 2017, returned home this week to a heartfelt welcome at the Norman Manley Airport. Bennett, though battling the flu, was overwhelmed by the outpouring of support she had been receiving. Seeing the the reaction from the crowd and people in Las Vegas overall from all the very racist countries, I have to say that it's like I was the person that won. And Bennett sought to explain why she wore the Afro hairstyle on the big stage. I already had the Afro before the competition and I just decided that I wasn't going to change. And I wasn't going to change to meet the standardized beauty of how pageant girls should look. 
and I just decided that no matter what happens, I'm going to give it my shot and my hair shouldn't be a barrier that should stop me from succeeding in the pageant. The Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Talib Rafai, is seeking to backtrack on a comment he made this week at the World Tourism Conference in Montego Bay, St. James. Speaking at the conference, Rafai urged hoteliers to stop building five-star hotels in three-star communities and leaving communities out of the process. Rafai also asserted that some all-inclusive resorts were modern-day plantations. But a day later, he used a press conference to seek to clarify his statement. Rafai says he was disappointed in the way his suggestions were portrayed in the media. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, reactions to the fuss over Lisa Hanna's attire in Parliament. <laughs>